welcome to the next video in the Suggestion App course. This is a complete course where we'll build a .NET 6 Blazor server application with MongoDB from the ground up. There are three things you need to know before we get started. First, this is part of a series, and this isn't the first video in the series. If you're just starting out, you should check out the playlist that's linked in the description to start from the first video in the series. Second, this course is actually a paid course. MongoDB sponsored it so you can put the videos on YouTube for free. Check out the link in the description to sign up for MongoDB Atlas for free to thank them if you haven't already. Third, you can also buy this course on imtimcorey.com. The link is in the description. Buying this course will get you all the lessons right away, the source code for each lesson, a certificate of completion, offline access, and more. It also helps sponsor more free content. The video will be the same as it is on YouTube, so feel free to watch the free version if you want to. Okay, let's jump into today's video. Note there may be more than one lesson in this video, since some lessons are short. Normally in the user interface design phase, we sketch things out. We, we grab a, a piece of paper or a whiteboard, and we just start drawing and, and crossing things off and moving things around because the, the process of design should start in a quick to change medium. So what I mean by that is when I do on a piece of paper, I draw and I cross off and I start again. I, I flip the page and do it over again. It's very, very quick. I'm not worried about the tool. I'm not worried about configuring things. I'm not worried about making sure it's the right number of pixels. I am drawing really rough diagrams just to get ideas out onto a piece of paper or on a whiteboard where I can look at them and say, nope, that's not right, or that has promise and move from there. We did that with this process. However, we have gone through the a number of iterations until we came to this spot. So this is not the early UI design process. This is something that we ended up arriving at to shortcut the process or shortcut this uh, this part of the design process. So this is the design that we came up with. But let's talk through some of the elements we thought through and where we're going to have a little bit of uh, trickiness when it comes to actually implementing this design. This is a web design. This is a web application. So when we look at this design, we have to think in terms of how will this look on a actual web page and what are the things we need to adjust based upon the fact that web is, is different than desktop. And so how this would look on a, a piece of paper or how it would look on a desktop app will be different than how it will look on the web. One of the dangers, if you are a great uh, print designer or a great you know, PDF designer or layout kind of person is that you design it for that type of medium and don't think about the consequences of the web because the web is different. A PDF, this is a PDF right here. Well, if I, if I zoom in here, you know, that's not a problem. It just makes everything bigger. That's not how the web works. The web is different in the fact that right now this is a very narrow view. And in fact, the, the design here is that we'll probably have the fold as in the, the place we get to start scrolling somewhere around this line here where it says upcoming. Because the fact that that's what the ratio of a normal page is. But as the page gets wider, everything's going to spread out. How is that going to look? And then as the page gets narrower, for example, on a mobile phone, how is that going to look? This design has not yet taken that into account. So we need to think through what will this design look like at different breakpoints, at different levels of device, whether it's a mobile phone, different mobile phones, tablets, or a desktop computer, or and this is something that came up, came up recently, fairly recently with a couple of people is they said, hey, your website doesn't do a great job when viewed on ultra widescreen. 
Well, that's not something that we used to think about because a widescreen computer was 1920. Okay, 1920 by 1080, that's, that's a, you know, HD screen. That's actually, I believe it's ultra HD. Um, it's 1080p. Well, that's not the width of an ultra widescreen. Ultra widescreen might be twice that width, but the same height. So how your site responds to that is important. Even if you say, hey, we're not going to use all that space. How you set that up is going to be important. So we have to think through that process. One of the things we're going to talk about as we get to the mobile design process is moving these categories and statuses above this listing here when we get to a mobile screen. But that would mean we could collapse these down, otherwise we're too tall. So I have to work through that. We'll have to work through other things as well, like does everything still stay on the page? Do we shrink down some of these things? Do we shrink down this uh, click to upvote section? Do we not include everything on the mobile device or do we include it in a different way? Kind of like the status and category shrinking down and going up top instead of on the right hand side. Now, looking at this part of the design here, this looks very much like a pop-up, but we're not gonna make it a pop-up because the web isn't really friendly with pop-ups. So instead what we'll do is we'll make it look like a pop-up just like it looks right now, but it's actually gonna be a separate page. So we'll even enable this X in the upper right hand corner to close this out and go back to this page. Let's make a suggestion page. So we'll have to think through that. We'll have to think through these uh, category options here because we want them to look nicer than just a radio button, which would be what it would be normally. And so we wanna make sure we have something that looks really good for our selection and yet can only be one thing can be selected at a time. So we'll have to think that one through. Notice the rounded corners, the, the little bit of shadowing, make it look like it's popping off the page. Everything in here, in fact, has rounded corners. Notice that all the rounding going on in all these different places, the status box is rounded, the category box is rounded, the search box is rounded, the new and popular toggle is rounded, the buttons are rounded. So we've got a rounding going on that's we have to keep track of because we'll need to implement that pretty much everywhere. Now, down here with the make a suggestion description page, we'll need to even shrink down that vote button even more. We'll need to add more information, add a second box down below for completed and figure out how that all looks when we, um, we structure it so that it fits on a mobile page versus a, a desktop page. And I think this page won't change a lot. The one thing that, that we'll probably have to adjust is the description here, which is very, very tiny right now, but that description will probably need a lot more space because it's got a lot more words. So we may have to put it the full width of this box as opposed to lining it up with the author's name and title. So that might be something we need to address for the smaller screens because we don't want this, this box to grow to be half the size of the screen for one suggestion. All right, so those are the kind of things that we need to think through in our design. We draw out and, and figure out what this should look like. But for us, we've got a lot of the, the design elements in place as a good starting point, and then we'll iterate off of this. Now, we're gonna take this UI design, we're gonna use it, but this does not mean we're gonna make a perfect pixel by pixel replication of this. Instead, we're gonna do what works best for our actual application. This is a design, it is not a set in stone contract. It's a suggestion that we work off of. So that's what we're gonna do, we're gonna work off a suggestion. We'll have something that looks very close to this as you have seen before, we saw the actual production site, it looks pretty close to this. So we're going to get close, but there will be some tweaks and adjustments based upon where we're at, okay? So that's the user interface design. That's the process I go through to really understand how this should roughly look. Having a rough design at least 
for your user interface will make your job so much easier when it comes to actually building these pages. Because of the fact that by having even a rough design, I now know, okay, this, these uh, suggestions probably take up two thirds of the page and then we'll have the category and status stacked and we need to have a white background, rounded corners, you know, those are the kind of things I can throw on a page pretty quick and then just tweak until they look right. But if I don't have anything to work off of, I'm trying to think as I'm building code, well, what should this look like? And then try to visualize it in my head. And that's, that's a very, very slow process and it will come up with some weird solutions. Instead, get your design on paper first. Again, not a tool, not a cool designer. This was done in Figma, but it wasn't done first in Figma. So design it first on paper and then put it into something like Figma or, or design tool of your choice if you really want to. But start with paper because of the fact you can iterate very, very quickly. All right, that's all for the UI design. Let's move on now to the logic design.